everyone, this is Beth from Art by Bidell, and I am going to show you how I make my, my journal cover for my junk journal January journal. So I have one of my signatures here, and I'm just going to measure from top to bottom about where I want to, for about how big I want this to be. So I'll just go along the edge with a pencil or a pen or whatever and make a mark. Now I'm going to line this up, and this is just a Walmart shipping bag. I'm going to line this up with my lines on my mat here, so I try to get it as square as possible. And let's see, I'm going to go to the 12. I have a long ruler. If I go from 12 to 12 here, I have an X-Acto blade here, utility knife blade, and I'll just cut down along the edge just like that. And if need be, I'll make a second cut here, or even a third cut, <laughs> whatever it takes, right? Until I have this cut off, and then I have the width of what my journal is going to be, my journal cover needs to be. Now, in order to do the height, now, in order to do the width, I'll take my signatures, and I'll stack them, press down on the fat side a little bit, bring this up and around, and I see that I need to take off probably about that much. So again, I'll line this up on my mat so that I try to get as square as possible piece of paper for my cover. And let's move this right on over to this line here. And we'll take our utility knife again line up our ruler and cut off our edge. So now we have the base for what our cover is going to be. We'll measure it one more time. Make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Press down on the edge here a little bit and we have a cover for our journal. So now it's just a matter of what do you wanna do with this cover? I am going to stray from my typical, which, and I'll save these pieces guys for some collage fodder. I'm going to stray a little bit from my typical way of covering. Let me get a piece of paper here for to cover my mat. And I'm going to just collage some paper on that part. I'm going to use soft matte gel. And I'm going to take my basket, as you see here, my container of all of these scraps. Let me get my mommy gummy paper out of the way because I know I'm not going to use that in here. But now I have all of these scraps of paper that are just pretty much all one tone until you get down in here further. And I'm just gonna pick from there and I'm just going to randomly take a soft brush. Well, it should be soft, but I'm not very good at cleaning my brushes. Open up my gel, put a good coat, make sure that you get all of the edges really, really well, and just start layering your paper onto your cover. And if it goes beyond, that's okay. We'll trim it off later. And it's all random with me. I really don't have a specific way that I do this. I just put my papers down, that's all. You could work left to right, you could work corner to corner and, and then just fill in. However you want to do it, that's up to you. You probably have your own method of how you like to do something like this. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to cover this whole piece, and then I'll be back. All right, so I have covered one side. What I want to do now is I want to do the other side. Now, when I do my papers for the other side, I want to make sure that I overlap so that I can bring a little bit around and cover up all these bare edges. I could just bring like this much around and be happy with that. I just want to make sure that all of my edges here are all covered with paper. So I may need to take a pair of scissors and I'm going to want to keep my paper as square as possible. So I'm gonna trim off these little edges here. Or what you could have done was when you were gluing this down, you could have had glue on those edges that were sticking over and folded them over. There we have it. I am going to now take my paper with the same matte gel and I'm going to apply it in the same way I did before. Only this time, I want to make sure that my paper goes around the edge 
of my cover like that. And I'll put more glue over here and then just fold that in like that. Now the drawback to this is you're gonna have both sides a little bit wet, so you kinda of have to be careful. Make sure you keep picking it up so it's not sticking to what you have on your table. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do now. My next step is to take some glue and wherever I may have missed and there's a corner sticking up or whatever, I'm going to get some glue in on that and get make sure everything is glued down nice and securely before I move forward. So I have my art glitter glue I could use. If there's a bigger piece, I could, like here, you kind of need the tip of the art get glitter glue to get in there and squeeze that glue in there. If I have an edge, I could use my glue stick. Really doesn't matter what I use, just as long as I get all the edges glued down, front and back. Now, I want to take a couple stencils, palette knife, and I'm going to use gesso. Now, the reason I'm going to use gesso instead of modeling paste is, right now, I don't want to add dimension to it. I have this Tim Holtz stencil. It's circles. I'm trying to see if there's a number or anything. THSO37. Let's take a little bit of gesso and randomly put some circles on my cover. I will do one side, let that dry, and then turn around, turn it around and do the other side. I'm not trying to get even coverage everywhere. I'm just trying to get some design on it. As you see, this is how it goes. We'll see you when this is all nice and dry. As I was working on this, I decided not to do the other side. I have a plan for, now wait a minute, I like this side better. So um, I will have to go back to putting circles on this side. Then I can do my next step because I want this to be my outside. In the end, it may not matter much, but I like that ledger paper. Not impressed with the map. So I'm going to do as I said, and then I'll be back. And that is using my stencil with my palette knife and my gesso and adding some circles to my page. So I shall return. All right, now it's dry and I'm on the side that I want to call my front. I have another stencil and it is a Delta Creative Climbing Vines. And I have some coffee and I'm just going to hopefully spritz some coffee through my stencil. And then I'll take it over and I'll do it on the other side. And I have a lot of coffee on there. We're not gonna see a stencil design, guys. So, let's just take this like this, and maybe this will help us. Nope, so we'll just dab some of it off, spread it around, and get coffee over the whole thing. There we go, we've aged it up, which was my intention. I wanted to do it with a design, didn't happen. My next step is to add some color. The two colors I wanna add are pink and green. And I am going to achieve that with my, with my Arteza watercolors. I've used sage green in the journal, so I'm going to use sage green on the outside. And I will just randomly add the color. With no rhyme or reason, just put on some color here and there. I think that's enough green. How about we add some pink? Bubblegum pink, I believe, is the other color that I used in my journal. So there we have my three favorite colors, green, pink and brown and we'll let that all dry okay we are back to that stencil that I wanted to use and the coffee was just too wet and it had too strong of a spray so I am going to use my distress oxide forest moss and get some of these vines and I'll just spray it lightly gently Now 
Then I'm going to take a piece of my cleanup paper that I have and just rub and pick up what is on top of the stencil. So I've added now some more texture to my cleanup paper. Then I'm going to take my stencil and there we have our leaves, our vines. And I want to put some vines over here also. And again, I want to take my paper and clean up the excess ink. More texture on our cleanup paper. And we'll let that all dry. Okay, I had taken and applied a layer, a light coat of clear acrylic sealer on this because I used Distress ink and I want to add some gesso over this all now just to pull it all together and do um and I just like the effect that that does so I'm going to take an, just an acrylic sheet here and some gesso and I'm going to put it on my sheet and then I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to pick up some of that paint and I'm just going to add a little bit here and there. And what I can see already is it's making my my dots that I originally put on that seem to have disappeared, it's making them come back. And I'm, and I'm good with that, I kind of miss those dots. So I will just add, oh, I don't know, just a nice little coating without destroying all of those layers. Of course, you know with your layers, you never get too Oh, too attached to any of them. None of them are so precious that you can't cover over them. And the layers are for making interest in the background. There we go. And adding dimension to your project. I think I like that. And it still did pick up some. I didn't put a heavy coat of the clear sealer, so it still did pick up some of that green. So some of my bubbles have a green shade to them, and, and I'm okay with that. But I can look down inside here, and I can see my pink. I can see the first green I put on, the second green I put on. I can see all of my papers. I can see my stencil, my leaves with my stencil with the green that I did. And I just am thinking that that is just so very, very yummy. Now, it needs a... Uh, focal point it needs it needs more this is still just kind of in process but I want to turn it over now and I'm going to take the rest of the paint that I have on my acrylic mat and I'm going to apply it to this side now this is the inside of my journal and for this I am going to I do believe cover it with my mommy gummy paper I did that on a uh, commission journal that I just recently did I added the coffee stain mommy gummy paper on the inside. Oh my gosh, it was just so, so pretty. So I'm feeling the need to do that to mine here. So I'm going to just blend these all together just to use up my paint because you know what? After I put my mommy gummy on there, it's not going to show anyhow. But I didn't want to waste the paint. Now I can also take the paint and just go to my cleanup paper like this and just put it on here. And that's gonna add more interest to our cleanup paper. There we go. So, I do believe I've taken care of the paint. Now I'll go wash these two. Let this dry. All right, I have some Titan Buff by Golden acrylic paint. And I have this stencil that has this little daisy on it. It also has this flower too. It has three flowers actually I could use. I have a makeup applicator. I have put a little bit of paint on my acrylic piece and I'm just going to dab some flowers randomly in different areas on my cover. I'll pick that up afterwards and see if that's bright enough. Actually, it does not show. So Titan Buff is not going to work. How about I mix, do a little cadmium yellow and that's Windsor & Newton. Right, if there's any in my tube, I will do that. And let's just get some of that on here. Okay, that shows up better. Still not as strong as I want, but I have an idea what I can do. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a bunch of these little daisy flowers all over. Okay, I think that's enough of those. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to take my cleanup paper here and I'm going to use up the rest of my paint. So 
So as I was doing my cleanup paper, I wasn't paying attention to cleaning my my thing. I was just going from the cadmium um, yellow to the to the Titan buff and just using up my paint. And I and when it mixed, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love those creamy yellows much better than the brighter yellows. So I added some more to my cover and got some of the creamy yellows on here. So that to me, I think is is much prettier than that brighter yellow. So I also am going to just wipe the rest of my ink paint onto this paper. And I sprayed my little acrylic piece with water and then wiped it on my paper also. So this paper will get set aside so it can dry and I'll pick out another one to use. All right, I am now at the stage where I wanna do some mark making. I am going to take um, maybe, I'm gonna take my Micron pen number 005. I'm going to outline my daisies. Start down here in the corner and make sure that's what I want to do. Okay, that isn't going to happen with the micron. So let's use, we'll use my black Posca pen. It's a little thicker than I wanted for a line, but it'll be okay. And in the long scheme of things, we'll be fine. Now, as you see, I'm not going for perfection. I'm ran just kind of going over these little petals and not worrying about if they're even, but I wanna highlight them a little bit. So I will go around this whole cover and highlight my daisies and then I'll be back. There are my daisies. Now I wanna add some scribbling. I want to create a couple white spots on my journal page or cover, but I'm gonna try this Titan buff again because I don't know that I want white. Let me find my thing here. And these are just gonna be some places that is going to be like highlighted on my, on my cover, like a focal point on my cover. So let's just get a brush. I think I wanna put one down here. Actually, maybe I am gonna go in with white and then I'm gonna bring one from the top down. All right, so I'll get that dry and then we'll go in with some white, just so. And figure out a focal point. What do we wanna put on the front of our journal? So I did a lot of birds and I did flowers. All right, I am torn between a bird and my favorite bird is the owl or my sunflowers. I, of course, I need to lighten this up because if I just lay the sunflowers on there, they get lost. And the bird, not so much because of my white around here, which I could make bigger. The sunflowers is a little bit big, I think. I thought about adding some of my mommy gummy to it. To do both of them would just be maybe not too much. Maybe an owl. Maybe it's not too much. I was thinking it would be too much. But an owl with those flowers... Framing him actually looks kind of nice. What if I did another piece of mommy gummy down here? Okay, I'm thinking that's what I like, guys. I'm gonna go with the owl and the flowers. So I will ink this all up and get it glued down. So I'm happy with how that turned out. I have the bigger flower with the sunflowers framing him. And then on this side, I have a silly little owl with his head upside down. I don't know how he accomplished that, but he did 
and that's all that matters. And then I put a few sunflower leaves here. So that completes the outside of my journal cover. Now on the inside, I'm thinking of adding just some mommy gummy or leaving it as it is. So I'll have my pages that'll go in like that. If I open it up, that's what I'll see as opposed to open it up and seeing that. I want to see this because it just looks better against that than this does to me. So I'm going to cover this. I don't want to cover like from completely side to side. I want to put a piece in the center. And I'm wondering if that would be enough. Hmm. I'm gonna go bigger guys so you just tear some of this off and then once that's glued down it's going to stretch out some too and then i'll get another piece for the other side does it matter if it's exactly the same no because you're not going to have them beside each other take another part off and then we'll see whether we do that but to glue it down i'm just going to use my yuho glue and get a good, pretty good coating all over the back of this. So I'll glue these down and then I'll be back. This is it guys. My journal has a cover and it, it's finished. Look at that chunky monkey. I love it. Some goodies sticking out on the top. I did a header on the spine here with some cheesecloth. And then I did a footer down here with, oh, I forgot my beads. I did a footer down here with some cheesecloth. So for my tie, I have this piece of ribbon with a key tied to it. It says secret, and it just unwraps from the journal like this. And it has a piece of Mommy Gami paper with some um, echo print fabric that I had done some stitching on and then stitched it to the back of my cover here and folded it over, stitched on some ribbon, and that's my closure. So for the front, I have this piece of packaging, and I, you see me do all the painting on it, and my owls, my sunflowers, is a five hole, two signature pamphlet stitch, and then I have this crazy owl on the back. We open it up, and I might put something here as far as I, I have the list of prompts that I want to add in. I don't know whether I'll do it the front or the back, but I just love the way the Mommy Gami is on the inside. Coffee stained Mommy Gami. Oh, and I stitched all the way around the outside of my journal cover also. So here is our first day. I am just going to do a flip through. You can Check out my playlist for a video on each one of these pages, and then I will see you at the end of the video.
we have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting my channel. I had so much fun with all of you. I hope you'll continue to be supportive of my YouTube channel. I will, let's see, the next video, this is, I'll be working on a Valentine journal next. And then I think I'm going to find another prompt challenge to join. So thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye now. Thank you.